Hello everyone, welcome back. In this video, we're going to be choosing a starting point. Because in the last video, we took this big black box of a computer, and we changed it into a green, purple, and blue box. And that's great and all, but at some point or another, we're going to have to create all these boxes to get the ultimate big end goal of the computer. So, we're going to have to choose to start with either the CPU, the memory, or the I.O. system. And it makes pretty much no difference at all where you start with this, but generally speaking, I personally prefer to start with a CPU, because that's generally the biggest part of the computer. It's where it does all the processing. It's where all the actual computing, as most people think of it, is done. So that's where I'm going to start in this series. And again, there's no, there's absolutely nothing that says you can't start with building this really amazing I.O. system. I know plenty of people who started there, and they've made absolutely amazing computers out of it. But, I personally, I'm just going to start with the CPU. So, that begs the question, what makes a CPU? Because right now, our understanding of the CPU is pretty much it's this big green box. We know it takes in some information, we know it takes in another piece of information that tells it what to do with the first piece of information, and we have absolutely no idea how we do it. And well, this is pretty similar to the situation we were with a computer in the last video. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to break it down. I'm going to take off this big green box that's sort of masking what the CPU is doing. So, you ready? Here we go. So, this is probably the most basic decomposition of a CPU that you can possibly do. You know that the CPU takes two pieces of information, an instruction that tells the processor what to do, and some data that it actually does all the processing on. This is pretty much the simplest decomposition. You just take those two pieces of information, and you divide the processor based on the parts that handle each of those information. So you have the control unit, that handles the instruction information. It takes the instruction, the instruction, wow, the instruction, and it just does whatever it needs to do to make the overall processor do whatever that instruction tells you to do. So if you have an instruction that says, hey, I want you to add two numbers, it's going to do whatever signal it needs to send out, it's going to do whatever that is, in order to make the processor add whatever data is being sent in. If you tell it to, I don't know, you want it to figure out the conversion between ASCII and Unicode for some reason, then it would do whatever the processor needs to do to make the output of whatever data you put in be the equivalent in Unicode. So, I don't know, those are just some examples. And yeah, so it's just figuring out what it's supposed to do. That's the control unit. And then we have the processing unit, which is really the bulk of the processor. This is the part that's actually doing the processing. It's the part that takes the data, and it will do some overall form of processing, which of course is determined by the control unit, and then it'll output it. So this is the part that's actually doing all the heavy lifting in the CPU. And it's called the processing unit, which I'm abbreviating with PU in order to save space. And now we're sort of at that point again. We can either choose to go with the, to building the processing unit first, or we can go with choosing to build the control unit first. It doesn't really matter. Each one is part of the CPU, and when you build both of them and hook them up to each other, you get a central processing unit, a CPU. In my particular case, I'm going to start with the processing unit. And the big reason I like to start with the processing unit is because it's generally a lot easier to, in my humble opinion, to take the control unit and make it control the processing unit after the processing unit's already there. Some people prefer the other way around. I'm not one of those people. So I'm going to start with the processing unit, which means we're going to build this giant heavy lifting device that's doing all the actual information processing. And that's generally a complicated task. It's not completely obvious how you're supposed to do that. So once again, we're at the end with this giant orange box. That's sort of the idea of a processor, duh, the idea of something that processes information. And the question is, what exactly goes into that? What makes a device that processes information? Actually, it's fairly simple. So, if you're ready, we're going to take off the hood, and we're going to look at what makes up a processing unit. Are you ready? Here we go. 
So, there you go. The processing unit can be divided into two parts. The register system and the AOU. The AOU is short for Arithmetic Logic Unit. You might have heard of this before, and really the best way I can describe the AOU is it's a collection of circuits. It's just, yeah, it's just a collection of circuits that'll do some sort of information processing. So, and generally speaking, these will be arithmetic and logical circuits. So for example, arithmetic circuits, you might have an addition circuit, you might have a subtraction circuit, you might have you might have a multiplication circuit, you might have a division circuit, those aren't as common, but sometimes they exist. For logic, you might have a circuit that, that does AND gates, you might have pretty much any logic gate. AND, XOR, NOR, XNOR, NAND, a any logical circuit. And the ALU is just this big general collection of these circuits. And generally speaking, the ALU has some way of being able to choose which of those circuits the information actually goes through. And that's the ALU. It's pretty straightforward in the end, but that's all it is. And other than that, we have the registers. And the registers, at the end of the day, they're just another form of memory. They're, again, this type of warehouse that holds a bunch of information that the ALU can process. But the thing about registers is, unlike our main memory, which holds every single piece of information our computer could process ever, the registers instead hold not all the information we could process ever, but they just hold the information we're processing right now. So, let's say we're going to add something. We're going to have, we're going to add, I don't know, 5 plus 3. That's my favorite example of addition, so let's just add that. So, we have 5 and 3, it'll be sent into main memory somehow, probably through I.O. And then, we'll have the control unit, it'll load the 5 and the 3 into the registers, and now that all the information's in the registers, that's what we're going to do. We'll have one register for the first input to the AOU, and one register for the second input to the AOU. And then, the control unit will choose which one that goes through, and then it'll output to, generally, the output register. And sometimes they're not even an output register. Sometimes it just goes straight out of the AOU, straight back to main memory. So, that's all it is. It's holding information that you're processing immediately. Notice when I loaded the 5 and the 3, I didn't load as, I don't know, maybe I have some giant 3D robot samurai ninja stored into memory for some reason, I don't know, D don't ask questions, computer doesn't need to know why it has it there, it just needs to know it's there. So, notice we don't load that giant robot samurai ninja into the registers, because we don't need to do any processing with the giant samurai robot ninja to add 3 and 5. And that's the idea of the registers. It's more efficient because we don't have to have all this unnecessary information that we aren't dealing with at the moment. And, realistically, do we absolutely need to have registers? No. If you really don't want to, you can skip registers and just have it go straight from main memory. That's a lot less efficient, but you can do it. But that's the idea of registers. They just hold information that you're supposed to process at that moment, and the OU is just this collection of circuits that will do some form of information processing on the registers, like addition, or subtraction, or AND, XNOR, XOR, anything you can realistically think of that would be reasonable for processing information. And yeah, so now, I think at this point, we really have a decent idea of where we can start in terms of just building the processing unit and building the processor. We can either start with the registers or the ALU. And I'm going to start off the AOU, because that's our big collection of circuits that does all the processing. And really, there's going to be a little bit that goes into figuring out what exactly makes an AOU, but not that much at this point. At this point, we really understand, well, hopefully you understand, what goes into this giant processing scheme, I guess you could say, that'll eventually make the AOU turn into a computer. You understand the AOU is going to interact with registers, and that's going to make the processing unit. You see, the processing unit is going to interact with the control unit, and that's going to make the CPU. And that's going to interact with memory and I.O., and that's going to make a computer. It's sort of this hierarchical design, if you want to think of it like that. But this is what makes the processor, this is what makes the processing unit, and this is where we're going to start. So, there you go. Hope you enjoyed. And in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about the AOU. We're going to talk about... That's exactly how it works, because it's just a collection of circuits. You can't go into much more detail than that. But, 
we're going to talk about how we can do it efficiently, because efficiency is a very, very important thing. And maybe we'll even start building it. Who knows? So thank you, and see you next time.